QYLD or the Global X NASDAQ 100 Cover Call ETF has always been sort of a controversial ETF. And even though this ETF can be sort of polarizing, this ETF has been very popular ever since I pretty much got started investing. Now in my portfolio, as you can see right here, I currently personally have around 2,729 shares. And although I talked about QYLD in previous videos, share with you guys how many shares I have a QYLD, how much I earn in dividends, etc. I often stated the fact that even though I hold a ton of QYLD, I'm not really interested in buying any more anytime soon here. But all this has changed. And I actually, as of recently, purchased some brand new shares of QYLD for my long-term portfolio. And in this video, I'm gonna share with you exactly what changed my mind. So if you're interested in QYLD, either you hold it, maybe you wanna hold it, make sure to stick around, drop a like down below, and let's get right into it. So before we go any deeper, yes, I own quite a bit of QLD, just over 2,700 shares, which currently pays me more or less $400 to $500 per month. Of course, it depends on how much QLD pays on that given month. But for the few investors that might not be super aware of what QYLD, the NASDAQ 100 cover call ETF even is, let's go through a quick brief overview on the website to learn. So it's this QYLD seeks to generate income through cover call writing, which historically produces higher yields in periods of volatility. So if you're familiar with dividend investing or cover calls, you probably already know exactly how this ETF more or less works. Now, QYLD has made monthly distributions for the last decade and plus some. QYLD has efficient option execution and writes call options on the NASDAQ 100 index, saving investors time and potential expenses of doing so individually. Now, this is a huge reason on why I sort of like some of these cover call ETFs is because, of course, you or I could go into our brokerages and just and buy the NASDAQ 100 ourselves, sell cover calls, do it all ourselves, but that takes a lot of money, a lot of time and energy. So why not pay a relatively cheap expense ratio and have the experts do it for us? Now, speaking of expense ratio, QLD does have a 0.61% expense ratio, which of course is much higher than like normal index funds, but QLD is not the average index fund. It's more actively managed with the option overlay, etc. Now, net assets is over 8 billion. So QLD, like I talked about earlier in the intro, is popular, has been popular for quite a while now. And with that, there's a ton of money invested into this fund currently. Now, as far as QLD's holdings, you can see that there's things like Microsoft, Apple, NVIDIA, Amazon, etc., etc. And then with this, of course, you see the short NASDAQ call option overlay on the entire ETF. Now, with this, of course, you get exposure to all the different holdings, but also, but also you get exposure to the premiums that are earned from the NASDAQ call options, which are very, very juicy, which is why QLD is able to pay so much in dividends per month. At least that's why it's been able to historically. Now, one of the main reasons on why I decided to start buying just a few shares of QYLD once again and add some shares to my portfolio was multiple different reasons, but one of the main reasons is this right here. Now, I know this is going to be hard to see on the screen, but I'm going to explain to you exactly what this is. This is the 2023 year-end tax supplement for global X ETFs, and specifically what I'm talking about is how QYLD is taxed, or at least has been taxed historically. Now, when it comes to taxes, this is going to be a very individual thing. I really don't even like talking about taxes on my videos all that often because it's so individual. Everyone has a different tax situation. Everyone has different tax plans. So it's honestly sort of even annoying to talk about because it's so individualized. And I really don't even like when YouTubers talk about blanket tax statements or things because from being a business owner myself and understanding taxes decently, Taxes, like I said, are going to be a very, very individual process. But what's important about QYLD is that QYLD offers a lot of ROC or return of capital, or at least it's how the majority of QYLD's dividends are being taxed. For example, I know it's hard to see right here, but in 2023, out of the $2.04 that QYLD distributed, $1.71 or so cents was return of capital. Now, right here on Investopedia, it says return of capital is a payment that an investor receives as a portion of their original investment that is not considered income or capital gains from the investment. Note that a return of capital reduces an investor's adjusted cost basis. Once the stock's adjusted cost basis has been reduced to zero, any subsequent return will be taxable as a capital gain. So this by no means is a video on taxes. And like I said, I really don't like going too deep into taxes. But the fact that QYLD's distributions are largely return of capital is very tax efficient, at least for now, for what I'm looking for. Now with that, I know what a lot of you are going to be saying, well, QYLD might offer return of capital for the distributions, at least for the majority. QYLD might also offer pretty decent dividends right from the jump, but QYLD is also down 28.5% on the max time frame, and this ETF is decayed quite a bit, like I have even personally talked about on several different videos. And I would say to all this, honestly, that's very true. And for those reasons, I'm only grabbing a few shares of QYLD here and there just to lower my average cost across my portfolios 
and just to sort of chip away at that average cost, even though I'm not all that far away from the current 1793. But because QYLD does offer 11 or 12% trailing 12 month dividend yields, and because I'm currently trying to build out my portfolio to not only grow over time, but also to offer a ton of monthly dividend every single month, with all that on top of the way that QYLD's distributions are taxed, this ETF for me specifically might be a decent ETF to have a little bit more exposure to long term. Now looking at every single dividend that QYLD has paid historically, over time the dividends have been all over the place. Some months being as low as 10 cents per share per month, and then some months being as high as over 20 cents, 25 cents per share per month. But as of recently, over the last year or so, they've been pretty consistent at around 16 to 18 cents, which once again isn't all that bad. It gives us around a 10 to 12% yield. Now, that being said, some of the covered call ETF fans always argue that even if there is some share price erosion, like we showed you a second ago, even if an ETF like QYLD is down over 30% as far as ETF price, the dividends are going to make up for it because these covered call ETFs do in fact, which to be fair, they pay a lot higher dividends than the average stocks or ETFs out there. So the idea is that even if the ETF price loses some value, the dividends are going to make up for it and then some, which should give an investor hopefully a total return, which makes it much worthwhile to invest into. And to be honest, this is sort of the more dark side about some of these covered call ETFs. They promise investors with things like high income potential, nice monthly distributions because who doesn't love getting paid out on a monthly basis, and also efficient option execution, which can, of course, in theory, help against downside or even volatility. But as we see, going through the actual numbers, charting out QYLD, and seeing the actual performance since inception, it's not necessarily the case. Now again, even though I do have over 2,700 shares of QYLD, I by no means would have QYLD be a majority of my overall portfolio or anything even close to that. Because long term overall, I do wanna build out a portfolio that's not only going to be offering me income, but I want the portfolio to also grow in price long term. On top of that, dividend growth is one of my favorite metrics of all time, which is why I hold so many shares of SEHD because it honestly doesn't get all that much better than dividend growth. But with all that being said, the fact that QYLD does offer around 11 or 12% yield and is tax efficient for my specific position that I'm in currently, I think QYLD will be a here and there buy for now in my portfolio, probably until I have maybe a few hundred more shares of it. Either way, it's just sort of interesting that over time, depending on what your situation is, as far as taxes, as far as your income level, or whatever the case might be, it's fun that you can sort of build a portfolio long-term, buy things, sell things, and just really have the portfolio perfect for what you're looking for and looking to get out of it. But lastly, now I wanna hear from you guys down below. In the case of QYLD, the global NASDAQ 100 cover call ETF, I wanna know if any of you guys are personally still buying or holding any shares of QYLD in 2024. Let me know in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to please like it, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks as always for stopping by and if you are interested in investing, make sure to check out these recent videos I posted right here.